Hi everyone, Gary here with uh, part two of the Omega 3000 uh, assembly and uh, I've got a uh, floppy disk drive which is uh, floppy disk cable which is compatible with the system now so I can hook up the floppy drive but first of all I was going to show you the installation of the zip memory now these are uh, 256k zip memory packages so you can see that um, they have little staggered uh, legs pins there and they get plugged into these sockets here in this area here where the zip memory gets installed now uh, I've done a, a blog post actually uh, on the Amigos blog site uh, explaining that you can either have this area populated with zip RAM or this area here with dip RAM um, so but you can't have both so you can see here that this it's unpopulated at the moment so I'll just uh, quickly explain um, that the zip memory needs to be installed in banks from 0 uh, through to 3 so there's four banks so this row here is bank 0 along with this row here on the left side so these two are bank 0 then we step up to bank 1, bank 2, bank 3 and then it steps to back to bank 0 again so bank 0, bank 1, bank 2, bank 3 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so you start populating uh, 0 first then 1 then 2 then 3 so here I'll be populating bank 0 and 1 so it'll be 0 1 there 0 1 there 2 3 0 1 there and there and again on this side so I'm just going to go through and install that um, and you'll notice also that there's a small chamfer on the left hand side of the memory and the memory there's actually writing on the front of the memory there as well so that just uh, helps you with orientation so um, I might work uh, it might be easier to work back down although uh, just to save confusion I'll start at the front here so bank 0 installed for the first batch and bank 1 bank one there okay and then bank two bank three and then bank zero we want to populate that one bank two three zero making sure the chamfer's on the right side bank one Two, three, zero. Bank one. Just making sure that I don't bend any pins over there. Two, three, zero. Just work my way towards the back there. Two, three, zero. Two, three, and zero. And it should be set to go. Uh, now two fifty six K, so uh half meg, one, two meg, uh, four, twelve, no that's one, two, three, four megabytes of RAM there, okay, and um, yep, so 
I'll plug in the uh, floppy drive cable here. So pin one. Uh, Got to be careful here. I you, there's a one stamped on the motherboard here on the left side, and you could be led to believe that that's pin one for the floppy, but it's not. It's pin one for the SCSI. And funnily enough, uh, of course, caught me out. Uh, pin one for the floppies on the right hand side of the floppy connector, but pin one of the SCSI is on the left. So just be aware of that. I'm obviously matching pin one with the red stripe on the side there. So that's floppy disk drive. Uh, part probably part three. I think I'll be looking at either installing a SCSI hard drive or I've actually got a, an IDE uh, adapter for this particular machine so I'll do either one of those right and just feed the cable through and I'm just plugging in the motherboard power connector there so. and um, floppy disk drive pin one is on the outer edge so I've also set the um, floppy to dev0 and um, let's get a close shot of the jumper that you need to set if you're running two floppy drives in this case I'm just going to be using one so this jumper here is uh, labeled no DF1 on the right hand setting there and you can see that I've got the jumper between this pin and the middle pin, so the right hand and the middle pin, so that's no DF1 and if you have the jumper on the middle to the left pin that's with for DF1, so if you're running dual floppy you change this jumper here. So that's yep, set for no DF1, single drive. Okay, so plug in the power floppy drive And the data cable with the red stripe towards the outer edge of the floppy drive away from the power connector. And that's ready for testing there. Okay, so this is the kickstart menu. So we've got uh, version 2 kickstart or version 1.3. I'm going to choose version 1.3. Okay, so the floppy disk is installed. It's loading from the floppy there. Uh, so what this is doing is uh, loading the kickstart into memory. So you, your traditional uh, Amigas like your, uh, well when I say traditional, I mean the likes of the Amiga 500, 600, etc. Um, Amiga 2000, uh, not sure about the 4000, but normally you would have um, kickstart and ROM, so you'll know that uh, when you turn the computer on, the uh, familiar old workbench uh, bootloader screen that you see here uh, normally is loaded from ROM, but in this case I'm uh, having to get it from floppy disk, so once you get to that point you can then just treat it like any other computer and in fact if you do a reboot here with that, I've taken the disk out if you do a reboot I think you find that the um, it stays in memory here so that, uh, well that wasn't a reboot, that was a soft boot so that's control Amiga Amiga keys on the keyboard will take you straight back to here so uh, let's try loading something here okay I've just inserted a uh, God's disk there, disk one, God's, as a test. It's looking good.
Okay. Sounds good. Seems to be uh, all working well there. So, uh, there it is, the Omega 3000, up and running. Uh, booting from floppy, at least. Um, uh, so, yeah, next video I'll go through the Super Kickstart in a little bit more detail. And the hard drive, SCSI hard drive that's installed there at the moment is faulty. Uh, so I'll be looking to either install uh, the op an operating system, showing, showing you how that all works, uh, on a, another fresh uh, SCSI hard drive, or IDE, dri IDE drives. So I've got a couple of IDE drives uh, hanging around in a, in a controller as well. So that'll be in the next video, is uh, showing you how to install an operating system fresh. So yeah, hope you like that, and uh, thanks very much for watching.